Hello friends, it's Lionheart here and it is day five of our Claw and Dagger reveals. My favorite faction, it is Scoia'tael. Oh boy. These cards are gonna be pretty powerful. Our legendary named elf over here is revealed to the final visual of characters that as far as I know are here are now going to be known to us. I want to give a particular shout out to the reveal video that Art made for the Legendary Elf. Amazing effort. I'm going to link that in the description. Go watch it. It's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And some cool discussion as well on potential combos for the card. This is the fifth of six factions. Sixth faction is going to be revealed tomorrow. It's Nilfgaard. This is your last chance to make a guess about what archetype is going to be supported. Let me know in the comments down below. You're here. You're hyped. I know. Trust me. Let's get straight into them. Let's not mess around. Let's go straight over to our Scoia'tael. And we're going to start things off with the common card. It is the Trickster. And you can see it is Elves and Bandits that are being supported here. So, Trickster, 4 for 4. Elf, Bandit, Agent. Deploy. Move the last played enemy unit to another row. Well, that's already annoying. So could that be good with movement synergy? I'll get to that in a minute. And infuse it with whenever your opponent plays an elf, damage self by one. So this is deploy effect. So you're just playing this, basically a free card to play. If you have movement synergy, fantastic. But it's for elf decks. Effectively, every time you play an elf, you're going to damage self by one, by one, by one, by one until the card's removed. Really nice slow burn removal, but irritating engine value for elves aggressively, which is something that they've lacked a little bit, certainly in an engine form. They have some removal, things like Yavin, but you have to set all of that up. It's not quite as convenient. It can be a little bit slow. Interesting card. Very interesting card. Now, the next is a tactic. A tactic called Backup Plan. Backup Plan. Damage the last unit played by your opponent by two and create a bronze elf with a deployability that was not in your starting deck. Okay, bronze elf, deployability. Well, there's quite a few bronze elves with deployabilities. The Squiretel Neophyte has a deployability. The Dobblethana Bomber has one. The Vryad Saboteur. So many different what have that option. The Blue Mountain Elite, for example, as well as several others. There's quite a few choices. Even the Harmony Half Elf Hunter, again, that is a deployability to spawn the other option, and you're probably not running that in the deck. It's a very, very curious option. Even Farseer for hand buff could end up being the way you go. Quite versatile at 5p as a tactic, though it does play some pretty good value and if you've managed to set up your trickster of course you're also going to be damaging a card and then playing another elf hitting that infusion tag curious little tactic how good is that going to be well so far some aggressive damage for elves and nice it's really nice to be able to see more of the swarm archetypes finding a place oh the heist okay the Heist is a brand new Echo card at 11 provisions and is also a tactic. Echo. Spawn three cargoes on an allied row. Well, I suppose the bleeding question is what on earth is a cargo? This one's going to take some explaining. Oh, really nice artwork. Love the artwork on this, but cargo is a new token. It is a doomed token and it has an order ability, though it is not zealed either so you're gonna have to wait to use this trigger the deployability of a non-veiled non-prepared non-neutral soldier agent or bandit so i'm gonna break that up a second so you can re-trigger the deployability of a card provided it doesn't have veil it doesn't have prepared and i'll get to what prepared means in a second it's not neutral so it has to be a square tail unit and it must also be a soldier an agent or a bandit. So there are, that covers a lot of things. There are a lot of agents, bandits, and soldiers in Scoia'tael, primarily elves, but there are some dwarves that fit that as well. Having done that, then infuse that card with the prepared category and banish the cargo. Interesting. So prepared 
is actually a, a, a category, a tag, rather than a status. Still purifiable, and it just means that it can't be retargeted by cargo effectively. Uh, it can't be targeted again. You purify it away. That's effectively how that card works. Units that were played this turn also cannot be targeted. So if I've got my cargo all in a row, and I slam, I don't know, let's say Vanadane on the board, I can't then instantly use that cargo to target Vanadane and replay his deploy again to spawn myself a pocket full of waylays all in one turn. Of course, I can do exactly that, provided Vanadane sticks on the board, which is a little bit scary. But we'll get to that in a minute. So I think this is a really interesting idea. The fact that you're using the heist, you're going to create these. It is an echo, so you can do this twice, remember. And you can trigger, again, the deployability of some of these cards. And there are some really, really good cards you would potentially want to do this with. I've already mentioned Vanadane, but Venosiel would certainly count. It, it makes me feel unwell to say that you could do this with Eldane if you wanted to redo that. I'm not sure... That's the best strategy in the world, but it's certainly possible um, that you could choose to do that. But I mentioned Dwarf, Zoltan Warrior, you could replay and redo his deploy. There, there are quite a few. There are quite a few. Even in Traps, Ibar Hattori, replay another trap. There's a lot of potential good gold synergy with this. You could also do it with bronze cards as well, of course. Cargo really is going to be a very, very interesting. Uh, now, you're starting to see the synergies. Obviously, it's an elf deck, and we've seen elves typically be very swarm heavy and reliant on that fact. All of a sudden, now, we're having the ability to perhaps pair the more recent abilities, things like your Simless, your Waylay combos, uh, your Vanadane to get that extra value, and replay that stuff, which is really interesting. But our Legendary, as I mentioned, beautifully revealed by Art. Okay, I'm going to butcher this name. Let me try uh, Telinin Ape Colin, another elf, bandit, agent, eight base power and 13 provisions. Now this, this is an incredible card. The deployability is already amazing. The order ability turns this into a potentially three point a turn, albeit random, damage engine. This card is so good. This card is so, so good. So what does it do? But the deployability, you shuffle an allied unit with a provision cost of nine or less to your deck. So shuffle it away, get rid of it, right? Take it out of your hand, off you go. Provision cost of nine or less. Then play the top elf with the deployability from your deck. Okay, so top as in in the deck order. Okay. So this could trigger the elf scenario in a single turn provided it hasn't been destroyed by a heat wave or something like that, because it allows you to play two elves in a single turn, that's already quite scary. This, with the right setup, could also mean Vanadane is in fact that top elf. You could trigger it, trigger it, play, and get all of that value in one go. That's already fantastic. But it's the order ability of this card that is really quite scary. This is the... If this card stays unanswered, I think it could be very, very difficult. If you've got locks and you're facing elves, this is your new target. Something you didn't really have before. But the removal of this is going to be really important, I think. Order. Spawn and play backup plan. What we've seen backup plan is the tactic that damages the last played unit by two and creates a bronze elf with the deploy that wasn't in your starting deck. Okay, so it's going to spawn and play that. But here's the thing. If this unit is prepared, and we've seen, of course, that Cargo does the preparation. So if you've used Cargo on this to reuse its deploy, which is something you're clearly going to want to do based on the next part, it will infuse itself with, at the end of your turn, damage a random enemy unit by the number of allied prepared units. Well, in a round, you can have three prepared units thanks to your Cargo. So this is quite a few steps to get to that. But if you've got your three cargos and you can target three elves, they are all prepared. This card, once using its order ability, is just going to start damaging. Even if it just damages one, then it's two, then it's, it's a lot of value. Potentially for upward of five turns, six turns, seven turns. No, I think six turns worth of three point damage on top of everything else it does. This is 
a card. The eight base power is also just a, a, a decent size slam, given its deployability to play another card alongside it. In theory, that's thinning, but because you're shuffling a card back, not really. Elves are looking mighty, mighty terrifying. I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of power, a lot of points to this. Most people, I think, are going to instantly go towards because of elves. Okay, it's Vanadane. And Vanadane can create multiple lots, which means my Simless can have so many more. To set all of that up, elves have always had good tempo in round one, which has been quite scary because you can just jam that scenario and find yourself thinning out and having 30, 40 points in just those first three turns while developing carryover. Now, that's going to be a carryover in the terms of waylays, of course. That's going to be harder to develop all of that and the extra waylays and find enough turns to fit all of this in. I think that you're going to find a lot of unoptimized versions of this initially, but I do think there's a very, very good elf deck in there. I really do. Um, excited to see potentially how some people will try and fit this into dwarves as well. I do love the dwarf archetype, I'm going to be honest. So trying to fit perhaps the heist uh, and those cargoes in as well would be really interesting. I'd like to see that actually, um, because of course... There are plenty of soldiers that are dwarves, or at least there are some that make it worth it. Think uh, Barclay can give everything one armor, for example, uh, and he is, of course, a soldier. There are a couple of other options like for row boost and stuff like that. It's possible. It is very possible that you could end up doing that. Would be worth it, perhaps. Would be worth it. Dennis Cranmer, also a dwarf soldier as well. I really like this. I like it in theory because it's really interesting evolution of the elf archetype. So in theory, I love it. Even when you look at things like Yavin, he fits the tag to be able to be targeted by cargo and it replays his deployability. So that's additional tall removal. If you want to go for typical elf play and you're thinking, well, okay, they did take away our free company for double Isengrim, right? In the most recent patch when they reworked those, well, actually, you know what? I'm just going to use a cargo on Isn't Grim and I'm going to boost all over again. There is so much potential. It's going to be a lot of fun. Do you see this the way I do? Do you think this is going to be good? Or is it going to be a little bit too awkward, a bit too slow? Is it all about all in elves? And all for that big, big, big Vanadane waylay from Simless combo? I, I'm wondering how many you can get. In theory, if nobody touches anything, and I'm... It's not double digits, but I think it's scarily close. Tell me your thoughts. How are you feeling about this? I've had five of six factions now, and I'm trying to evaluate where I feel each of them's going to sit, and it's almost impossible. I really do enjoy Reveal Season. Remember, of course, with all of this, points, power, and provisions can change in the run-up to the actual launch of the cards. We've already seen that happen once with the Syndicate Bronze, where that was shown in the Art 5 provisions, but it was actually a four provision card, making it much better, by the way. Um, and it could still be the case for these. I don't think it is, but it could be. It's gonna be so good when we finally get our hands on them. One more day, devs reveal Nilfgaard tomorrow, and of course, I will run you through my thoughts on the Nilfgaard cards. When they turn up, I'm very curious to see what you think. Let me know what faction you're planning on playing first in the comments down below. And I will be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching as always, friends. See you soon.